Like many mental health professionals, I initially got interested in this field because I needed help, I needed support, I needed answers, and I thought if I learned more about the brain and about mental illness and about therapy, I might be able to help myself. Now that I'm 41 years old and I've been a clinical psychologist for 15 years, I often think back on if, if me today met me at like age 17 or so, what would I have said to that person? Would I have been able to help that person? One thing I'm pretty sure about, I would have been my hardest client. And I've dealt with a lot of people in some really difficult situations who are really up against it. As a clinical psychologist who specializes in severe treatment-resistant depression and anxiety, as well as eating disorders and trauma, I see a lot. And I still think my hardest client would have been me. Not because I've had the hardest life in the world, not because I've had some immense amount of trauma. Those things are, are not true at all about my own story. I don't know that I've met anyone who is less resilient than I was, which is super embarrassing to say. I took everything so hard. Like I could get knocked off course for days from a sad thing from a children's movie. And I just had no ability to recover from it. I was in rough shape. And I think a lot about, you know, if that person, 17 year old me, walked into my therapy office today, what would I say to that person? This might be a little bit different today because like many people, I am gentler when I talk to other people than I am with myself in my own head. And I don't know if that's good or bad. Maybe sometimes I am too soft and too gentle and too patient. And so today, this is me talking to me. So I'm gonna sound a little bit different than you're used to hearing it from me if this is not your first time here. Maybe that will be helpful to you. If you relate to me, if your circumstances and background are like mine, maybe you need to hear this stuff too. I know I would have. If it's horribly offensive to you or it seems rude or insensitive, it's just me talking to me, so it doesn't count. <laughs> I know that probably doesn't work, but I still feel like I wanna try to give that disclaimer anyway. So these are the things I would have said to my younger self that I think, although he would not necessarily have liked to hear them and maybe wouldn't have taken them seriously and maybe would have punched adult me in the face, I still think he needed to hear. And the first one is, it is not your fault that your life got messed up. You got knocked off your course by a violent storm that you could not have possibly seen coming and had no way to prevent. But you're still the one responsible for getting it back on track. And that's not fair, and that's hard to hear, I know. But even though it isn't your fault that you ended up here, the only one who can get you out of this, at least start that, is you. Think of your life and your emotions as a product at the end of an assembly line. And the decisions you make every day, the habits you have, your lifestyle, your routine, these are the machines that are creating the product at the end of this assembly line. So if you don't like the product being created, meaning you don't like yourself, you don't like your life, you don't like where things are going, there's only one thing you can do. Well, there's two things you can do about it. You can complain and be miserable, or you can change the processes by which the product is created. Be honest with me here. Look at the way you're living. Look at the things you're doing. And tell me, seriously, do you really think that this can produce something that makes you happy? Do you think you're spending the majority of your time and your energy and your attention on things that are going to help you? If you don't, stop complaining about how messed up the world is, even though it is, and how stupid other people are, even though they can be, and apply that energy that normally goes to complaining to changing the processes that create your life. You do not have to change the world, which is really good news because you can't change the world. You have to change your world. You have to change the little bit of it that surrounds you. And you have to make that work better for yourself than this mess that through no fault of your own, you have ended up in. It's the only way it's gonna change. The second thing I want you to know is you need to stop being oddly proud of how messed up you are. I, you don't need to wear your suffering like it's some badge of honor. It, not fitting in is not a competition sport. And you have nothing to show for the fact that you're unfortunately really good at it. Watching the most violent horror movies you can find and listening to death metal and industrial noise music is not a personal achievement. It's just a thing that you do. 
you've incorporated things into your identity that really don't belong there and don't serve you. It's not hard for you to find ways that you don't fit in and that you don't belong. I know. They jump out at you every day. You couldn't miss them if you tried. I know. But start trying to find some ways, some places where you can fit in. Even if they are few and far between, you're going to have to look harder for these. But your life will be a lot better if you do. The third thing I want you to know, for better or for worse, you're going to have mixed feelings about this one for sure. You are definitely a human being. And I know not a lot of people will talk about that. I, I know you've questioned it. And again, knowing how this has been for you up until now, I don't blame you for questioning it. I know that you have not felt like you belonged anywhere. I know you've wondered if you were an alien or a replicant or an experiment of some type. You're not. You're just a person who was born into some circumstances that just aren't a great fit. And that sucks. That's really, really hard. Would have been so much nicer if things just fit for you. If you just felt like you belonged in the places that you coincidentally ended up in. You don't. And that's really, really rough. But it doesn't mean that you're not human. You're just kind of a different human. And that's not all bad either. There's going to be times in your life, there's going to be circumstances where that's a good thing. Where it does help you, where it does serve you. This, unfortunately, is not one of those times. This season of life, not so much. But there will be. Don't doubt your humanity. It's okay if you don't belong. You just got to belong with you. That's really all that matters. And within that, I need you to know that your answer, so to speak, first of all, it's not any one thing, but it's also not another person. You've got to stop thinking other people are going to be able to fix you. That's not a real thing, especially like romantic relationships, especially girls. It's just, that's not the answer. Now, don't get me wrong. You find the right person. You find a trustworthy, safe, stable person. It will make your life better. Absolutely. I'm not saying it's irrelevant. It will not fix you, though. It won't. This is a job that only you are qualified for, and you need to stop trying to defer it to other people. That will never work, not in a million years. Another thing I want you to know is that every season of life requires different skills and almost everybody faces at least one season of life for which they are poorly equipped. Some of us face many seasons of life for which we are poorly equipped. If you are a very sensitive and empathic person, but you're also pretty neurotic and thin skinned and easily offended, middle school and high school probably aren't going to be a great time for you. But it doesn't mean you're some horrible, worthless, broken person. It's just another example of a certain place or a certain time just not being a great fit for who you are. Also, for the love, please stop trying to prove yourself to people who don't care about you. Don't twist and distort your values and your personality to try to fit in with the people who you think you would belong with because you share certain hobbies or interests or aesthetics. If they were really your people, you would not have to mask constantly to feel like you fit in. It would be better for you to have one or two authentic relationships than a dozen forced superficial relationships. And it'd be better for you to have no friends than to have friends who legitimately don't seem to like you and mess with you a lot. If people are treating you poorly, don't try to win them over. Don't try to prove them wrong and that you deserve to be liked. Just go away from them. They're not worth the time and energy. That's time that should be spent on you. That's time that should be spent looking inward, trying to figure out what the heck has gone on with your life. How did it get here? And how are we going to get out? Not proving to people that you're not a loser. That first of all, they're going to think you are anyway. Second of all, who are they? They don't care about you. You don't matter to them. Don't waste your time on it. It is not worth it. Also, go to sleep. Like, for real. It's, I, I know. I know that late at night, when everybody else is asleep and there's no demands, no expectations, I know that's the only time you feel truly at peace. <sighs> but you're in school. And you're waking up early. And every single day that you go to bed late and wake up early, your brain is suffering because of it. A tired mind is an emotionally dysregulated mind. Part of the reason you feel so awful all the time, not 
the only reason. But part of the reason is because you are chronically exhausted, because you have created behavioral insomnia for yourself. It's a vicious cycle. Every late night combined with every early morning cranks up the difficulty of that day a few more notches. Your days are hard enough. You don't need extra difficulty. Let's do everything we can to make them a little bit easier. And sleep would go a long way towards that goal. On a very related note, because usually when you're up too late, this is what you're doing. Quit playing so many video games, especially by yourself. You're creating gaping holes in your life and in your memory where skills should be and relationships should be and memorable experiences should be and family should be. I'm not saying it has to be zero by no means, but it should not be the majority of your waking hours. You're going to have nothing to show for that. And it's going to keep you on this downward spiral because you're going to feel further and further behind your peers academically, skill-wise, socially, because they're spending more time working on themselves than you are. It's, it's not some big giant mystery that they're being more effective than you. You're spending most of your time on something that does nothing for you other than distracts you from how miserable you are. And you need some of that for sure. I know, I'm not saying you have to face every day just head on, but don't make it the focus of your life. You will fall further and further behind. And it's, it doesn't have to be that way. If you change your allocation of time, energy, and attention, you can get caught up. You can. This is not an insurmountable problem. You just have to make good choices about what to do with your free time. And, and you're not really doing that. And the last thing I want to say to you, try to find the good with your family. They are not perfect people. Neither are you. But you've had experiences with them that are very unique and very special. And they're the only people who are really going to be able to equip, to some degree anyway, to understand that. There's going to come a time when you really want to reconnect with them, when you really want to reminisce about those times. And if you let this rift keep growing between them and you, it, it, it's going to be harder to do that down the road. Get what you can from those relationships. They're, they're not perfect. They never will be. But you don't have to abandon them. You shouldn't abandon them. Find the good in the imperfections. I have no idea what he would have thought of that. But that's what he needed to hear. I hope there was something in there that you needed to hear too. Take care. I'll see you next time.